This is a magnificent reading. I hope I can do it justice. A contemporary reading, Gender, by M. Jade Kaiser of Enfleshed. There are so many ways to speak of gender. Gender like a collage, scraps and traces, bits and pieces, hints and fragments of the obvious and discernible, arranged imaginatively and intentionally to craft a whole new picture. Gender like a constellation, a particular manifestation of the infinite possibilities for stringing together a life, a story, a set of traits and characteristics, longings and loves that offer somewhat of an outline, a suggestion, an insinuation of one way of being. Gender like a beloved family recipe, passed down with love and respect, but altered slightly or significantly to suit a time, a place, a person. Gender like soil, formed by millions of tiny granules, ancient and evolving still. Compost of pasts, enabling life to bloom. Gender like water, taking different shapes and forms, depending on its surroundings, more flow than final. There are so many ways to tell the story of who we are. There are so many ways to break open the rigid containers of a colonial making. The binary, the creation of a two gender system with harsh and polarizing boundaries is not made for life, but for domination in gender and in race. For life-giving truth in contemporary expression, thanks be to God. This is a reading from Mark chapter 13, 1 to 8. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of the disciples commented in passing, Look, teacher, what huge stones these are. What wonderful buildings. Jesus replied, see these great buildings. Not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be torn down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives facing the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will all this happen? What will be the sign that all this is about to take place? Jesus began by saying, be on your guard that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the one, and they will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of war, do not be alarmed. Things like this must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and empire against empire. There will be earthquakes throughout the world and famines, yet this is only the beginning of the labor pains. For the love, for the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Um, good morning, everyone. It's nice to be um, among some familiar faces that I know, as well as some new faces. Um, yeah, during, as Joe kind of alluded to, during um, my sort of advocacy and faith journey, I came from the Evangelical Anglicans and obviously found that a pretty tough place to exist. Um, and Pitt Street Uniting Church has always been um, a place where uh, I knew I would find support and encouragement. Uh, and through kind of some of the advocacy of Equal Voices, you know, they always opened up their space and offered it um, as a place to meet and gather and hold events and, you know, I think we ran a conference here. Um, so yeah, it's always been such a welcoming, encouraging place um, to be and some of the pride services that have happened have been hugely encouraging. So thank you for your ministry, um, for being part of this community and for just being a light to others because I've benefited from that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really lovely to be here this morning and also because um, 
I actually haven't kind of spoken in a church for a little while. In fact, I was thinking, I think this is my first time in church this year. I've been having a bit of a break. Um, all that advocacy um, kind of left my nervous system feeling pretty um, activated. Uh, and I realized taking a break, I thought I'd just kind of take a little bit of time off and here I am kind of a year later having not been to church in a little while. So <laughs> um, it's nice to come and to speak. Um, and also because for the last kind of 18 months, I've sort of been keeping my reflective theological brain to writing a book. Um, I kind of work Monday to Thursday uh, at an organization called 2010. They're a, a kind of queer youth organization. Um, and on Fridays, I head to Marrickville Library and I set myself a goal, go one, one day a week for three hours and just write what you can. Uh, so 18 months later, I'm at 95,000 words and I'm not just writing, I'm in editing mode now. Um, and I'm hoping to publish the book in March. Um, and I hope you'll kind of let me tell you a little bit about it this morning because I'm going to weave it into some of the readings that we've had. Um, because the whole theme of the book, and you know, specifically for this service coming into Trans Awareness Week, and Wednesday is Trans Day of Remembrance, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but what I've been writing about in the book is about how trans and gender diverse people reveal divinity to us. Um, and specifically, how gender expansive people are part of God's plan to heal gender binary violence, big thing, uh, in the church and world. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. Come with me. Um, it's about how God is gender expansive in and of themselves and that Jesus in the Gospels centres the leadership of gender expansive people and particularly in this divine kingdom of equality and nonviolence that directly challenges the patriarchal kingdom of Rome. It's a big thesis. It did come from a thesis in my master's. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about it. We know that binary gender norms, um, for example, the fact that you know, we're ex men are expected to be inherently strong leaders who shouldn't show emotion or ask for help, um, that women are innately softer people um, who are better helpers and often too emotional. Um, these binary gender norms are what all the major violence prevention organizations say drives inequalities between people and cause gendered violence. So the gender binary creates a lot of restriction and harm on cisgender people. Um, if your uh, gender aligns with the one that you were assigned at birth, you're cisgender. Uh, so, the, so the gender binary creates a lot of restriction and harm on cisgender people to perform these roles, uh, and they suffer the consequences of them. Um, but what they also do is cast trans and gender diverse people, as well as all queer people, as unnatural because we don't fit into those norms. Yet when we embrace people who expand these gender norms, our world can heal and we get a little closer to God. Uh, and these ideas come out in the first reading by M. Jade Kayser that there are so many ways to tell the story of who we are. There are so many ways to break open the rigid containers of a colonial making. The binary, the creation of a two gender system with harsh and polarizing boundaries is not made for life, but for domination in gender and in race. Trans and gender diverse people reveal divinity to us, and gender expansive people are part of God's plan to heal gender binary violence in the church and world. Hopefully that's a pitch for you to read more about it when I publish it in March, if you've got a little taste for it. Um, but when people are let free from the norms of man or woman, they get to embrace deeper, more foundational divine values. So they don't have to perform man or woman. They get to get to those more deeper foundational values, um, divine values of justice, love, kindness, and to embrace them more fully and freely. And gender expansive people disrupt the restrictions and the pressures of gender norms, creating equality between people and liberation to choose what kind of human do I want to be in the world if I don't have to be these, these qualities of a man or these qualities of a woman, kind of breaking apart those binary norms. And the movement of divinity in the world is gender expansive. That's my pitch to you. And my story into this revelation um, really was through my own experience. I came to realize all these things through my own experience of being trans. Um, I was assigned female at birth. The doctors gave their best guess. 
And for a lot of my life, I was really trying to perform femininity and play the role of being a woman when I didn't really resonate with this identity at all. I remember getting compliments one day um, at uni when I wore a high-waisted skirt. Um, and so then I was like, oh, OK, maybe I'll go and get a few more of these. So I went out and bought five high-waisted skirts. Um, I didn't really have any desire to do that, but I got this positive external validation for doing that. So that's what I did. And meanwhile, in my head, I was so confused by female fashion, and all I wanted to wear was what the guys got to wear. And fast forward quite a few years later, there came a time where um, my trans and genderqueer identity came really close for me to ignore. I remember this overwhelming need to kind of cut my hair every few weeks because it would square out my face, um, or, started to, uh, or I started to kind of experience like quite a lot of discomfort, um, something I now know to be gender dysphoria. Um, I bought a, gender, uh, a chest binder um, to kind of flatten my chest, and I wore clothes to completely cover over my curves. And if I ever saw a photo where my chest appeared too large, it would make me really uncomfortable, I'd cringe, and I'd, I almost not even saw myself in those photos. And then one day, I had coffee um, with a beautiful friend of mine who shared their own story of having chest surgery. Um, and I remember feeling like some of these things were sort of pushed to the back of my mind for a while, and then in that moment, as I heard my friend's story of how they had gone through this surgery to kind of flatten their chest, um, finally these things were allowed to come forward and I was able to kind of hold them and accept them and it gave me the permission to consider that maybe that was something I wanted to do too. Um, and there was actually a beautiful photo that lived on this wall for a little while post-surgery um, that you might remember. Um, and from there, I was kind of off. I found a surgeon, then I started on hormones, uh, and now I'm just living my most affirming genderqueer life, um, and it's a really beautiful thing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and that whole journey has allowed me to understand the gender expansiveness of God and the unique divine superpower that trans and gender diverse people hold. Because as I have slowly let go of performing femininity and of feeling the pressure to play being a woman, as I've ignored the voices from my past, the Christian leaders, um, and found a way to embrace my own authentic identity of being genderqueer and non-binary, it has freed up so much space in my life to cultivate qualities that are far more important to me and my faith than gender. More space for love and generosity, for meditation and prayer, connection with others and healing from hurts and healing from those hurts which might go on to hurt others. And to write a book that will hopefully affirm so many other people. This movement of gender expansiveness in my own life has allowed me to connect deeper with God and to cultivate divine qualities in my life. As MJ Kaiser says, gender can be described like a constellation, a particular manifestation of the infinite possibilities for stringing together a life, a story, a set of traits and characteristics, longings and loves that offer somewhat of an outline, a suggestion, an insinuation of one way of being. We've mostly been taught that there are only two options for our life, two sets of qualities and characteristics that are defined by our genitals, hormones, chromo chromosomes and sex characteristics, that our bodies define who we will be, man or woman strong or soft, leader or helper. And the world punishes a lot of people who stray from these lanes. But when we look up to the constellation of stars and planets, we can be reminded of the infinite possibilities and drawn into the story of a God who expands the breadth of the universe and is reflected in diversity. Some of us move fluidly like water and together we make a great recipe or a stunning collage. Our diversity reflects the expansiveness of the God who created our color. For all my trans, gender diverse, gender non-conforming, and gender expansive siblings, let this be a reminder to you that you are a direct revelation of the infiniteness and expansiveness of divinity and of God. Um, as I came to the second reading for today, I have to admit I was telling Simon in the back room up here 
Um, Joe messaged me and said, look, this is the lectionary reading for today. Um, are you happy to go with it? And I actually looked up a different passage. Um, <laughs> I thought it was the passage where the seeds get scattered. It's Mark 4, 1 to 8, not Mark 13, 1 to 8, where the seeds get scattered and some grow and some get scorched. And I was like, oh, what a beautiful you know, thing to reflect on for Trans Day of Remembrance. Some people get to flourish, some people don't. I'll go with it, Joe. Um, and then as I opened up to prepare for this, um, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> um, so at first glance, this, second, uh, this gospel reading um, was a little out of place in the theme of today for divine gender expansiveness um, and of a trans day of remembrance, trans week service, um, because it's essentially this apocalyptic meaning making of the Jewish temple's destruction in the first century. It's a story that's written within the worldview of an understanding that the world is imminently about to end uh, and the temple's collapse is part of that. <laughs> Jesus is quoted as saying, not a single stone will be left on another and everything will be torn down. Um, if I were placed in this story, I would definitely be alongside Peter, James, John and Andrew taking Jesus aside quietly to get a little bit more goss about this whole debacle. You know, essentially asking Jesus for a bit more information on how and when this will all happen. Can you give us any warning signs? Uh, and Jesus responds, be on your guard that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the one, and they will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Things like this must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and empire against nation. There will be earthquakes throughout the world and famines, yet this is only the beginning of the labour pains. Um, and I don't want to be too literalistic as I reflect on this passage because I'm not trying to start a cult about the world's end of the world happening imminently. Um, but this passage really did feel poignant to me uh, in the weeks after Trump has been elected, largely on the platform of a right-wing Christian agenda. And I get the image of someone saying, I am the one, and somehow, even as a convicted criminal, deceiving so many. I've also seen over the last couple of weeks how this election result has emboldened and sparked misogyny and transphobia across the world that many feminist advocates and transgender influencers are receiving direct messages uh, which include their personal details and threats of violence against them. I saw that LGBTQA plus crisis calls spiked more than 700% in the last two weeks, according to the Trevor Project. We know that part of Trump's legislative platform will continue to restrict the rights of trans, gender diverse and gender non-conforming non folks in the States. Um, that anti-trans bills are on the rise and each year their number increases. And particularly legislation re which restricts us from playing sports, to express our gender identity when going out in public, from using bathrooms at a local cafe or park or at school, to accessing healthcare, particularly the types of surgeries and hormones which have absolutely transformed my life and my mental well-being, or even just the basic right to self-identify what our gender identity is and to say, I'm trans. Uh, and there's more and more laws coming against these. This Wednesday on Trans Day of Remembrance, we take time in our calendar to acknowledge that all these little pieces of discrimination build the structure of a world where people are killed simply because they are trans, gender diverse, or gender non-conforming, simply because they leave their homes as themselves, and the world has been taught to hate them for it. This movement deceives people by setting up organisations and lobby groups with the sole purpose of churning out disinformation about our community, particularly in publishing and disseminating research papers that undermine what the majority of healthcare professionals say about providing gender-affirming care and support to trans people. Many will come in my name saying, I am the one, and they will deceive many. Jesus follows this by saying that nation will rise against nation and empire against empire. Again, maybe a poignant reflection on the many world wars currently in battle, maybe most predominantly on Israel's decimation of Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria. So at times like this, where do we go? I always return to and find hope in the one kingdom that has so much prominence in the Gospels a kingdom which streams from the realms of the heaven alongside Jesus. It holds and embodies the divine essence and energy 
which breaks in to heal and redeem and to restore equality and justice. It stands in opposition to the kingdoms and nations which harm and other. The kingdoms which separate rights between people, the kingdoms that drive violence and harm. There is a kingdom, a kingdom, a queendom, an alternative reality, whichever language suits you best, of equity and nonviolence, of compassion and expansiveness, which we have access to. It centers and celebrates the expansive superpowers of trans, gender diverse, and gender non-conforming people, and it positions queer people and LGBTQA plus people as unique revealers of divine healing and liberation. This kingdom of justice and love, of kindness and care amidst other kingdoms which restrict and reduce is sustained as we together cultivate its softness and love like we are doing today. We may be in trying times, a time of destruction and violence perhaps, and one particularly of violence against trans and gender diverse people from my, from my perspective. And as we take a moment to acknowledge and name this, particularly coming into Trans Awareness Week and Trans Day of Remembrance, we can move through this acknowledgement to ground ourselves in the hope of an expansive God who has come with liberation and compassion. We can find rest and recovery in the all-encompassing presence of divinity, who is here with us and who we can turn to for help. We can tend to the softness in our hearts, turn towards divine healing, and center expansive beauty in our lives because this is the kingdom that will overcome as we keep connecting ourselves into it. Thank you. <laughs>